Hey everybody, if my fiddle was a dog, this is what you'd see. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, this occurred to me when I was adjusting some stuff and I had to lean forward. You know, I can see the me on the screen right in front of me. So anyway, yeah, that's that's what it would look like. You know, and I, most of my private lessons students have pets, so I see their cats and dogs all day long. And if it's a dog, you pretty much just see a nose kind of do this and then every now and then it'll jump up and wants to like that um if it's a cat you see nothing but cat <laughs> pretty much um, i like it though i like pets a lot uh so anyway um i've got something fun for you i would had a request from gil for a mandolin kickoff and i thought well i might as well do one for the fiddle players out there too but first, if you haven't signed up for You Can Play By Ear, my live online workshop starting April 3rd, go ahead and sign up because there's only a week left to sign up if you want to catch all the sessions live. However, if you can't make the sessions live, you can get, uh, everyone will get a copy of the video from the sessions and all the PDFs and all of that kind of stuff. So even if you can't make it April 3rd or one of the other sessions, make sure to sign up. You can still sign up after it starts, but... You can come live if you sign up now. Uh, so in the class, you're going to be learning how to uh, how to hear chord changes, how to read the guitar player's left hand, how to pick up other secret cues that all the other jammers are following, how to start to play the melodies you hear in your head, how to find melodies more quickly in private lessons, how to retain the things you're learning more, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So the link's down below. Make sure to go sign up. It's only 100 bucks for three sessions. They are hour-long sessions. You get to keep the videos forever along with all of the other materials. Plus, I've got a slick Kajabi platform where you can stream all of it as well. All right, so... We're going to do a classic kickoff that I call Tub of Lard because it goes Tub of Lard. And uh, I actually uh, have been changing my bow pattern doing this. You know, I grew up uh, doing this kind of stuff. Played Western Swing a fair amount in the past. Played in the Western Swing Band and stuff like that. And of course, one of the earlier songs I learned once I hit kind of an intermediate level was Faded Love. And it uses this tub of lard thing. And I was taught originally to bow this with two down bows. I guess three if you're counting the downbeat. Ooh. Tune up those A notes. So anyway, that's how I always did it. And then uh, Justin Branham, who is one of the best Western swing fiddlers I've ever heard, plus a whole lot of other skills on various instruments, on a lot of instruments, uh, he shared on one of his videos on his Facebook, I believe. He has a Facebook and maybe a YouTube channel. Go look for him. Uh, he shared that a better way is to actually bow down up, that you get a better groove. So I've been making that change. But it's not habit yet. I'm still actually worse at the new way. But eventually, I'll be exactly like Justin Branham. So anyway, that's the bowing to be thinking about. Now let's get into the notes. The way this pattern works is you figure out what your downbeat is to a song. Uh, so the one I started with would work for Crazy Arms. Uh, so we want to look at the downbeat of the melody of the first of a verse or a chorus whatever part of the song you're going to use for your intro so we look for that downbeat and then we look for notes that lead up to it notes that are lower in pitch so a great way to do this is to just go down the scale two more notes so if this d note is a downbeat that's a three on the a i'm playing there for you tab people if that d note is your downbeat we go down a note we go to c just going straight down the scale, that's a low two, and then to B, which is a one, still going straight down the scale. And that gives you the notes you need to play, but you're going to play the other direction. So you start on the B, that's one on the A, you play low two, which is C, with shorter bows than I'm doing, I'm just playing slow. And then finally, your downbeat melody note, the D note, which is three on the A. 
and that's that's the formula. Now you can also use an arpeggio if you want. So you could find your downbeat note and if you know what chord is being played, in this case it's a G, then you can use the G arpeggio. So we look for what is the next lower G arpeggio note. Well this B is. That's one on the A. And then what's the next lower arpeggio note? Well it's this G note. That's a three on the D. And now we can use those two notes to play tub of lard. Tub, oh, singer, <laughs> sitting, singing in the wrong key. Tub of lard, like that. So that's the formula. Two ways to do it. When you're working up a song, try one of each and see what works better. So now back to Faded Love. Faded Love uses the arpeggio formula. So our downbeat is an A note. There I'm playing unison A's, pinky on the D and open A. And this song uses the arpeggio formula. So you start with your downbeat note, which is A. You look for the next lower arpeggio note. This faded love's in the key of D, so we're dealing with a D chord, a D arpeggio. So then we look for the next lower note, which is F sharp. That's two on the D. And then we look for the next lower in the arpeggio again, which is open D. And now you've got your tub of lard kickoff. Now when you do this, stay up near the frog and use this area. It bounces nicely and comes back up and it has a lot of power to it. So you're not going to have a wimpy kickoff the same way you would if you just did this. Now sometimes that's perfect, but it doesn't really count as the tub of lard. The tub of lard is a little more choppy. Like that. Um, now you can use this with double stops as well. And we won't go into that today. We're going to keep it simple. But you could add notes to make double stops for these that fit the chord or fit the harmonized scale you're playing in that adds even more and makes it sound really good. So if you'd like to see a follow up on double stops for this topic, let me know, know down in the comments. If you have any other requests for topics, I'm always looking for those. So let me know down in the comments. And don't forget to sign up for You Can Play By Ear, where you're going to learn the things you need to keep up in jams better. If you're just somebody who's constantly falling behind or even falling behind a little bit, to keep up in jams, know what chords to play, to be able to pick up things faster in private lessons and camps. I know a lot of people, they come and tell me, I went to music camp and I was the only one who couldn't pick up the song they were learning by ear. Like I wondered if everyone else knew the song already. Then I asked them and they said, no, we didn't know that song. We just picked it up by ear. This happens to a lot of folks and you can learn to play by ear. So come sign up for the class. It's gonna be worth your time. You'll be able to ask questions on camera to me if you want. You can ask questions beforehand. You can even ask questions after class is over and you get a whole bunch of extras to go with it. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're not and click that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It's a great, easy, and free way to support the channel. Make sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. And if you're watching on Facebook, make sure to follow this page, share, and like. All right, I'll see you all later. If I had fancy editing tools, I'd just make it look like I did that right in the first place. But you know what? Everybody messes up a double stop now and then, at least for us mere mortals. All right. Bye, everybody.